Okay, so right now what we have to do is that we're gonna implement a, a movement for the bird that goes up and down, or in this case it will go down and up. And we do it because it makes the bird look nicer. When the scene starts, if we press play right now, we can see that the bird is static. And we want the bird to be simulating that it's flying. And for that we need to create a movement for the bird. But we are not gonna animate, create another animation for the bird. What, we, what we're going to do is that we're gonna create a new object. So we, we're gonna go to the hierarchy and we're gonna create an empty object. We're gonna call this object bird parent. And we're gonna reset the transform position of this object. And now what we're going to do is that we're going to make the bird parent the parent of the bird. So drag the bird to the bird parent. And now the bird has become a child of bird parent. And what we're going to do is that we're going to animate bird parent. So select bird parent and go to the animation window and hit create. And now we're gonna go to our assets. Make sure you're, you're in your assets inside animations. And inside the animations folder, we're gonna create a new folder called bird parent, like this. And inside the bird parent, we're gonna create this animation called bird. We can call it maybe up, down. Okay, so let's save it. And now we can create animation. So here, you can see that there are many buttons here in the animation. We have the play button that we used before. And we have a red button here. If we press it, we have entered the, the recording mode. This means that whatever change we do on our game object, it will reflect. So any change that we make to bird parent, it will it will get saved in here. So right now, bird parent is the bird parent is the parent of the bird. So if we move the bird parent, we will move the bird. So let's try to move it. Right now it's at position 000. zero zero. So we want we want that position to be there. So we can add a property to the bird parent uh, game object by selecting this add property. And here we have the the child and we have the transform of the parent. So we're not, we're going to add the position of the parent. So click add. And now uh, we should be able to have the position of the bird parent. All right. So now we have. You can see that when we add the property, it gives us two keyframes. It gives us the same position at two different uh, at two different uh, times in space. Oh, sorry, at two different points in time. So, so we have the position zero zero at at zero 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 in here, and then when one second has passed, we have the same exact position. So maybe at zero thirty, what we could do is here in the scene, we could move the bird a little bit down over here. And now if we press play, we can see that the bird goes up and down like this. So nicely, maybe it's a little bit too fast. So what we can do is that we can select the first keyframe. So you know that it is selected because it becomes blue and then hold shift and select the last keyframe. So we select all the keyframes in the animation and now we can drag the, the animation to the right like this. So if we press play, we can see that uh, the bird actually goes lower, which is great. All right, so that's a good animation right there. So when we stop, when we are finished with the animation, we just uh, click this this red circle again, and we get out of the recording mode. And now if we press play, we will see that the bird actually goes up and down. That's perfect. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing in the game scene. So let's go to our project, to, to the scenes folder, and we're gonna go to the game scene, save our changes. And we're gonna do the same thing for this bird. So we're gonna create an empty object. We're, we're going to call it bird parent. We're going to reset the transform position. We're going to make the bird the child of bird parent. And here, bird parent has a weird name. Let's fix it. All right, so now we have to animate bird parent. So what we're going to do is that we're going to go to, an, to the animation window and hit create and inside the assets the animations folder and the bird parent we're going to create another another up and down animation and this one we can call it up down two for example so it doesn't have the same name as the first animation that we created and we're going to do the, we're going to do the same exact thing so so we're going to press the recording mode and we're going to add a property we're going to add the transform dot position of the animation so it's in here at 0 0.30 we're going to just move the bird slightly down 
a little bit and now we can see that we have the animation here it's a little bit fast but we can fix this by selecting the first keyframe holding shift selecting the last keyframe and just dragging the animation a little bit a little bit to the to the right hit play and now we can see that the bird is actually animating okay so we can get out of the recording mode and now if we press play here we can see that the bird is actually moving okay so what happens if we play the game now so let's play the game so if we play the game now we can see that the bird when we die the bird is moving why is this happening okay so this is happening because the bird parent is animating at the beginning of the game and we're not stopping that the animation at any point so to fix this or to see this more clearly what we're going to do is that we're going to go to window and we're going to go to animation and then we're going to go to animator this will open the animator window you can drag the animator window you can hold click and hold and drag it up down here a little bit so you see what's happening so if we press play let's see what's happening we press play and when the when the game starts the animation starts playing the up and down two animation starts playing because the there's a transition from entry directly to the animation so we play the game and when we die the animation keeps playing it doesn't stop so we need a way to disable this animation so to disable the animation what we can do is the same thing that we did with the bird before we can create a reference of the bird parent animator inside the bird script and then we can enable it equal we can we can set that enable is equal to false so we can disable the animator so let's do it let's go to the bird script so we can go to our scripts and let's go to our bird script or we can go directly to visual studio if you have it open and we're going to create a reference to the animator of the bird parent so in this case it's public and we say animator animator and we're gonna put in here bird parent anim just to make sure that we know that this is the animator of the bird parent and now that we have a reference to the bird parent animator when we die so when we die here we're going to make sure that the animation of the bird is equal to false and the animation of the parent so so instead of uh, doing it here when we die we're actually going to do it sooner because if we do it here when we die it's a little bit too late we have to do it before we have to do it in fact after we tap the the screen for the first time this would be the right way to do it so let's uh, do this so when we when we tap for the first time we want to set the gravity to 0 0.8 and let's set bird animate parent animator dot enabled equals false so the first time we tap the screen then we're gonna is the is the is going it's going to be the time where we're going to stop the bird parent animator so if we click uh, we save the script we go back to the unity editor and in the in the bird script now the bird script is waiting for the bird per, the bird parent animator uh, reference so let's give it to it let's drag the bird parent to the bird parent animator and now if we hit ctrl s and we play the game we can see that the bird is actually moving but when we play the game the animation should have stopped and as you can see the bird doesn't move so everything has worked okay so uh, that's gonna be it for this video i'll see you in the next video okay so our game is looking pretty good so far so in this video we're going to try to make a black fade animation so we can transition from one scene to the other in a with a smooth and nice effect so to implement this behavior what we first need to do is that we need to create a new sprite in the hierarchy so we're gonna go to our sprites folder and we're gonna look for this black square and we're going to drag it to the hierarchy like this we're gonna change the name to black fade so the name is now black fade and what we're going to do is that we have to resize it so let's press t and let's resize the black fade like this as you can see the black fade does not appear uh, in front of the ground and in front of the title and the bird this is because of the layer that this black fade is in if you if you take a look at the sorting layer it's in the default layer so let's create a new layer for the effects so hit the plus button and let's create a new layer called effects now if we select our black fade we can uh, select the new layer that we have created so now everything looks fine so now what we want to do is that when we start the game we want to fade out of this black fade of this black sprite into our scene 
Okay, so to do this, we're going to select our black fade and select our animation window and hit create. And now that we have hit create, we can create a new animation. So go to assets, animations, and in here create a new folder called black fade. And go inside the folder and call this animation. Uh, for example, let's call it fade out because we're going to fade out. All right, so we have this animation going on. So now we can press the recording button, and every change, any change that we make to this game object is gonna, is gonna appear here. So what we're going to do is that we're going to click here in the sprite render component in the color field, and we're going to play with the transparency of the black fade. So in the beginning, we want the black fade to be completely black, and you can see that I have specified the value, and you can see that. A keyframe has appeared here with the corresponding value. So at 0, 0, we want it to be black. And at 0, 1, for example, let's uh, make it uh, transparent. So at this, so remember to move the white line. Remember to move this white line to wherever. So we're moving it at 0 0.1. Now select the color and select the alpha to completely transparent. So now we hit play. You can see that it's actually a little bit fast. So we can uh, drag this keyframe a little bit further, maybe 0 0.20. Okay, that's pretty good. But now if we go to our animator view, so in our animation window, we can uh, click the record button and get out of the recording mode. Now let's go back to our animator uh, window and we can see that uh, when we when we get when we start the game the fade out animation is going to play because it goes from entry the transition goes goes from entry to from entry to fade out so if we double click on is in this fade out animation uh we can see here in the inspector that it that it says loop time and the box is checked this means that this animation will play in a loop for the bird we wanted to, the, uh, the animations of the bird to be in a loop but for this black fade we only want to do it once so uncheck this box so when this animation plays it's only going to play once so now if we go back to animation make sure that the white line is here and uh, what we're going to check we're going to go to the animator window and we're going to press play and see what happens as you can see when we press play the fade out animation plays only once so it doesn't play many times we don't want it to play many times we, we only want it to play once all right, so we achieved that. Now what we want to achieve is that when we when we enter the menu scene, if we hit play, we want a fade in transition. So the screen becomes black. And then when the, the screen becomes black, we actually uh, go to the next scene. So we press play, nothing happens. So we wanted to do it smoothly, not abruptly like this. So to do it like that, we need to create a new animation. So we, we're going to select our black fade object and we're going to go to the animation window and here where it says fade out we're going to click here and create a new clip so inside the assets animations black fade folder we're going to create a new animation for the black fade this animation we're going to call it fade in so we're going to save and now this is a new animation that we can create if you click here you can see both animations the and you can create as many animations as you want for a game object in this case we only need to fade in and fade out and now we are going to define how the fade in is going to work so for the fade in it's going to be similar to the fade out but um, the, the other way around so let's click the recording button and at the beginning we want the transparency to be uh, equal to transparent so we want the transparency to be equal to zero and then at 0 0.20 for example you can click here to move the the white line whenever you, whatever you want so at 0 0.20 let's uh, set the the opacity or the transparency to 100 or 255 so now you can see that we fade in maybe that's a little bit too fast maybe we can drag the keyframe a little bit maybe to 0 30. okay that's that's pretty nice we can get out of the recording mode now and if we go to the animator we can see that now we have our fade in animation but it's separate from everything so we know that if we start the game we're gonna fade out but then what about this fade in how do we access this fade in so the way to do it is to actually let me do this a little bit bigger we actually uh, right click where it says fade out and we can select make transition so we can make a transition to fade in and now we will be able to transition to fade in 
but only when we specify it so here this is the this white line over here is the transition so if you click on it you can see some specifications some fields here in the inspector and what we're going to do is that uh, we're going to uncheck has exit time because we don't want uh, to wait any 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 amount of seconds to go from fade out to fade in we want to do it immediately so let's uncheck fixed duration and transition duration set it to zero so we immediately go to fade in when we set the trigger and now we have to create a trigger to go from fade out from this state to this one okay so we're going to create it from here where it says parameters so here uh, on the left it says layers and parameters so make sure you're in parameters and click this plus sign over here and we're gonna set it to trigger and we're gonna, we're gonna call this trigger fade out so this this is gonna be our trigger so now if we play the game we can see that the game fades out and if we activate this trigger this fade out trigger um, what should happen is that the fading activates but we haven't set this trigger yet we have created the trigger but to actually uh, set this trigger we have to go here in the inspector where it says conditions and click this plus sign and now you can we can select from the list of triggers when we only have one trigger so far fade out so so now if we hit play you can see that uh, fade out activates and if we hit the trigger now fade in activates but as you can see fade in is a loop and we don't want fade in to be a loop we want we just want it to run once we want the animation of fade in to run once so cl double click fade in and uncheck loop time now if we hit play we should see that everything works properly we fade out we set the trigger and we fade in and that's it all right so we have successfully defined the behavior for the black fade now the only thing that we need to do is that we need to uh, we need to call this trigger from the code so to do that we're going to create a behavior so we're going, we're going to create a behavior for the black fade so we're going to check basically that if we're going to check if we're in the in the menu scene we want to go to the what we want to do is that we want to go to the next scene to the game scene and we if we are in the game scene we want to go to the menu scene and we do that by by uh, by defining a behavior for the black fade so let's do that let's go to the project view and let's go to our scripts and in our scripts we're going to create a new folder and this folder we're, we're going to call it animations and inside the animations folder we're going to create a new script and this C sharp script we're going to call it black fade capital b black fade like this we're going to open the script and inside the black fade we're going to delete all of this because we don't need it we're going to create a method it doesn't have to be public so we're going to just say void and we say on black fade finishes so this means that when the black fade finishes we want something to happen so when the black this method is going to be called when the black fade finishes so when the black fade finishes we want to either go to the menu scene if we're in the game scene or to go to the game scene if we're in the menu scene so in here we're going to check and to check if we're in one scene or, other, or the other scene we need to import the library using unity engine dot scene management okay so now we, we can check we can say if uh, scene manager scene manager dot get active scene dot name equals menu so if the scene we are in is the menu scene we want to actually um we want to load the next scene which is the game scene so scene manager dot load scene we want to load the game scene else if scene manager dot get active scene dot name equals game and if we're in the game scene and we press the menu button we want to go to the menu so scene manager dot load scene menu like this okay so now that we have defined this script let's go back to the unity editor save the script go back to the unity editor and attach this black faith script to the black faith object all right so now we have our black faith script with our uh, 
attached to our black fade object a black fade object so what do we do now we have everything set up what should we do right now okay so right now what we have to do is that we need to okay so what we need to do right now is that we actually need to do some adjustments to the animations okay so when we fade in uh when we fade out that's normal because that's uh because that's going to happen when we enter the scene but we want to activate this method this on black on black fade finished when we fade out okay so let's select our fade out animation and in our fade out animation what we want to do is that when we finish so let's move the okay fade in okay so when we fade in sorry when we fade in when we finish the fade in animation what we want to do is that we want to add an event here in the in the last keyframe when we finish the animation so to add an event go over here and you can see that there's like a like a stick like a small stick with a plus sign and click it and now you can see that if you move the white line to the side you can see that here in the last keyframe there's like a a blue a blue stick or something like similar to that a blue a blue thin stick and this is an event so if you click on the event here in the inspector yeah you can see that there it says animation event and it says function no function selected so we have to select a function from here and the function that we can select from here is the one that is in the script of the black fade so here you can see the only function that we have declared which is on black fade finished select it and now that we have selected it now if we if we press play we can see that we fade out and and it should fade in for some reason it doesn't fade in oh, okay so the reason why it doesn't fade in is because we need to actually call the trigger so we have uh, done everything everything right we have done everything right but we need to call this trigger this fade out sorry it's not fade out it's fade in so let me call it the way i'm supposed to call it fade in okay so we want to call this trigger fade in because we want to fade in so we the way to do it is to go to our menu manager and in our menu manager when we instead of saying scene manager dot load scene game scene what we're going to do is that we're going to comment this out because we don't want to do this and what we actually want to do is to call the trigger of the black fade animator but to call the trigger we first of all we need as you can imagine a reference of the black fade animator so here we're going to say animator animator black fade animator like this uh, and we're gonna make it public of course because we need to set the reference in the inspector and here we're going to say black fade animator dot set trigger set trigger and inside the parentheses we're going to open quotes and specify the name of the trigger it's very important that the name of the trigger is the same one that we defined uh in the in the animation okay so fade in because we're going to fade in not fade out we're going to fade in all right so now everything is set so now if we hit play we can see that we fade out in the beginning and if we hit the play button we should uh we should actually fade in but we haven't assigned a uh, the animator of the black fade to the to the to the button so here if you select the menu manager you can see that the black fade is it's good to make these mistakes because then you can understand why things happen the way they happen so now that we have selected the menu manager uh, we have here the reference for the black fade animation so just select the black fade object and drag it over here and now that we have the reference completed we can actually play the game and it will fade in and go to the next scene okay so now what we can do is to make things easy we can go to our prefabs folder and drag this black, black fade to the prefabs folder so we can create a, a prefab of the black fade and what we can do now is save this scene and go to the game scene and in the game scene select the prefabs folder and drag the black fade onto uh, the hierarchy of the game scene and what we're going to do is that we're, we're, going, we're going to go to visual studio and we're going to go to game manager and when we say uh, on OK button pressed here, we don't want to load the scene. What we actually want to do is that we want to call the animator. We want to set the trigger of the animator of the black fade. 
so here we're going to just say public animator black fade animator and now inside uh, the on ok button pressed we're going to say black fade animator dot set trigger and we're going to set the trigger to execute the animation in this case it's fade in all right so we have that set let's not forget to to select the game manager and and set this reference okay so now we have a reference to the animator and if we hit play we can see that we fade out and if we die and we go back to the we want to go back to the menu okay so i said on ok button pressed i made a mistake again it's not on ok button press it's on we want to do this over here we want when we want to actually go back to the menu if you knew the mistake that i made then congratulations okay so like this okay we want to fade in when we go back to the menu all right so hit play hopefully this time it will work okay so we hit okay we restart and then we hit menu okay it says that the parameter fade in does not exist that's because maybe the way i called it is not like this with a capital f but with a lowercase f let's see if that was the mistake okay and let's go back to the menu all right and if i go back to the menu you can notice that there's something weird going on and it's that the ground is not moving this happens because when we die when it's game over uh and game over is set to true in the in the move left script we said that if game over is equal to false then we can move but if game over if game over is equal to true then we will not be able to move to the left uh, so the ground that's why the ground is uh, paralyzed so the way to solve this is that we're going to go to the to the menu manager and in the start method we just we're just going to do a quick fix we're going to say game manager dot game over equals false all right so at, when we execute the menu scene this start method is going to execute and it's going to say that game manager dot game over equals false so then this is going to be true and we will be able to move the ground to the left all right so now if we hit play we'll see that uh, it's game over we go back to the menu and the ground keeps moving all right so that was it for this tutorial for this uh, video and i'll see you in the next video okay so now what we want to do is that when we play the game we want to when we tap for the screen for the first time what we want to do is that we want to get ready and this image to fade out of the screen and then when they completely fade out then we want to start spawning the pipes and making the pipes move to the left okay so basically what we what we want to do is that we want to give the user a little bit of time to get used to the to the jumping of the bird before it starts uh, dodging the pipes or going through the pipes okay so to achieve this we have to animate the get ready image so let's just hide the black fade for now so select black fade and just hide it because it's covering everything and it doesn't it doesn't let us see what's behind and now we select the get ready image and we go to the animation window we can actually create an animation so let's create a new animation in assets animations create a new folder and we'll call this folder uh, get ready and inside this folder we'll name we'll, we'll create our animation and we will name our animation uh maybe fade out it's a good name okay so now we have created the animation we can go ahead and click this record record the recording button and we can start making changes so let's select the color and let's set it to to full to 255 of of alpha and then after maybe 30 seconds we're going to so move the white line to 0 0.30 and and we're going to select the color and uh, and select the alpha to zero okay so that's the simple animation if we go to the animator view and double click on the fade out animation we can uncheck the loop time here in the inspector because we don't want the animation to be a loop we just want to run once the animation okay so we have that done but as you can see the get ready has vanished if we go to the animation window we can see that the get ready vanishes 
but what about this other image so to make it fade to there is one thing that we can do and that is that we can actually add the property in here and here you can see that there is uh, the tap to start the tap to start image so we can actually uh, play with the children of the game object that we are animating so we can uh we can um just expand the tap to start and here we can select the color and we can add it and now we can we can do something with the color of the of the of the of this um, with the color of the child so select the color of the child at 0 0.30 we have it at 0 which is uh which is fully opaque and we're gonna go to 0 0.30 so select this one not don't select the the get rid image select the tab to start and we're going to select the color and we're going to make it zero of uh, we're going to set the alpha to zero so if we if we hit play we should uh, see how it changes okay so it's not working because we were not in rec mode we were not a uh, recording so let's record and now in recording mode we can actually change the alpha to zero and now if we play if we play we can see that everything runs smoothly in here the the transparency should be 255 so at the start i'm just focusing on the on the color of the top to start so at the beginning it should be fully opaque and at 030 it should be totally trans transparent all right so now if we hit play you can see that everything should work fine Let me mm, try to make it fully opaque. Okay, if it's not working, just uh, select the, the last keyframe of the tab to start image and delete it. And then move the white line to where it says 0, zero 030 and then change the color and make it transparent. All right, so now, now it's working. All right. So now both elements are fading out that's perfect all right so now we can stop recording and we can see that uh, we can we can see that the this fading animation is not going to be a loop so that's what we want all right so we have the animation going on so right now we are we're good in the animator window we're going to create a, a trigger so to tell this animation that uh, we want it to fade out because when we start the game we don't want we don't want this animation to fade out because we want the user to be the one who decides when this animation fades out and the user will decide by tapping once on the screen so when we start the game what we're going to do is that we, we're going to this game object is going to start in an empty state and from that empty state from that empty state is going to transition to the fade out animation so how do we do this let me expand this a little bit we're going to right click and create state empty and now we're going to right click where it says entry and we're going to select set a state machine default state so the default state is going to be the the empty state the new state and from the new state we're going to transition to the fade out so right click on the new state make the transition to the fade out like this and in our fade out anime and in the transition from the new state to the fade out we have to edit the settings so uncheck has exit time fixed duration set the transition duration to zero and click here where it says the conditions and we have no condition so we need to create a parameter so let's click here where it says in parameters click the plus sign and we're going to create a trigger and we're going to call this trigger fade out all right so now that our trigger is fade out we can select the transition and we can actually click the plus button and let's get rid of the first condition which is empty just select it and click this minus okay so we'll leave it at this so if we call this fade out a uh, trigger we will fade out so if we hit play we will see that everything starts here in the new state nothing happens so we and en we entry the game and here we are in the new state and when we fade out everything fades out all right so when we fade out we want the game to actually start all right so how do we do this well we do this doing the following thing we're going to go first of all to our bird script 
and in our bird script what we're going to do is that we're going to take a look at the first time that the user taps on the screen so the first time that the user taps on the screen we call the column spawner and we call the game manager game has started so what we're going to do is that we're going to create a new method called void and we're going to call this method on get ready animation finishes so when the get ready animation finishes we want to call these two methods so command x select them command x and inside this on get ready animation finished on get ready anim finished copy paste them so now we have this method defined and this is the method that we're going to call when the animation ends and in, inside here we're going to set the trigger we're going to set set the trigger for the get ready animation so the way we set the trigger is by actually creating a reference so we say public animator get ready anim and in, inside here we're going to say get ready anim dot set trigger i'm going to set the trigger to fade out and when we fade out so we're gonna we, we have the reference over here that we have to set from the inspector and when we fade out when the animation finishes what we want to do is that we want to call this method so to 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 define this behavior let's go back to the unity editor and in the animation window when this animation finishes we want to add an event so click this button this small button here and this will add an event so here we can select the function that we actually want to to execute when this animation finishes but we have we haven't defined it yet so to do that let's go to our project and let's go to our scripts and inside animations let's create a new script called get ready anim and let's open this script and inside this this script we're going to create a method called void on get ready animation finishes or on game anim animation ends like this inside this method we're going to call we're, inside this method what we're going to do is that we're going to call this method that is in the bird class so to call this on get ready anim finished we need to actually we need to actually get a reference to the bird so let's do that so let's say public bird bird and in here we're going to say bird dot and as you can see here this is not a public method so we need to make it a public method the on get ready animation anim finished and now we can we can actually select the on get ready animation finished and so when we when we end the animation we're going to call this method and this method is going to call this other method which is going to call which is this method over here and this method over here is going to call the the methods that we need to call to start the game or to start spawning the the columns to the left all right so the only thing that we need to do now is to to set this to, to set this method in inspector so let's go back to the unity editor let's go back to animation to the animation window make sure that the get ready object is selected so we see we see the corresponding animation and here let's select the uh, the event that we're going to trigger when we finish the animation and let's go here to the inspector and you can see that there's a lot of methods but we are not interested we are only interested in the one that's below every every that's at the bottom so click here in this arrow and maintain a little bit it's going to take a little bit of time till we get to the bottom and when we get to the bottom we're going to say we should see the method in theory but we don't see it and it's because we forgot to do one thing we forgot to actually attach the script to the get ready image object so go back to the project and this script should be attached so drag it to the get ready image okay now if we click the event and we go here and we go to the bottom of this list we're going to see the method that we have defined which is on, on get ready anim ends all right so when this animation finishes it's going to call this method and we're going to call this animation when 
we tap for the first time. We also need to specify the get ready animator reference. Let's see if we have done it. I think we haven't. So let's select our bird. And in here we need a reference to the get ready animator. So let's pass in the get ready image over here. All right. So now we play the game. We should see that there is an error. So, okay. So we forgot to pass in the reference of the bird to the get ready to the get ready anim C sharp script. All right. So, so our bird has the, the our bird has the reference to the animator of the get ready, but our animator. So if we go and take a look at our get ready image. We can see that the script, the get ready anim script, doesn't have a reference to the bird. So let's pass in the reference to the bird, drag the bird. All right. So now if we hit play, everything should, should work fine. And it works fine. All right. If we make it bigger, you can see that everything works perfectly. And if we if we try to go back to the menu, it doesn't work because the black fade is not active. So, so the black fade you cannot see the black fade because the black fade is we remember that we hit the the black fade. So, all right. So everything works fine. So that's that's gonna be it for this video. I uh, see you in the next video. Okay. So now let's create a hit animation for the bird, or more than a hit animation, I would say a hit effect. If we play the game and we hit the ground or the pipes, nothing really happens. And we, what we want to do is that we want to create a simple hit effect for the bird. So the user gets uh, an output of the collision of the bird with the pipes or the ground. All right. So to implement this, we're going to go to the hierarchy. And uh, OK, so what we're going to do is we're going to do to our project. Let's go to the to the sprites folder and let's look for this white sprite for this white square let's drag it to the hierarchy let's name it um, and we're gonna name it hit effect and now we have to create an animation for this game object so go to the animation window hit create and go to the assets animations new folder create a new folder call this folder hit effect and inside this this uh, folder we're gonna create the animation we're gonna call the animation hit and save it now we can actually okay so we cannot see the the hit uh, the the hit effect object and it's because it's in the wrong layer so select the hit effect and here in the sorting layer in inspector select effects effects so now we can see the hit effect we want to resize the hit effect so it covers the the whole scene like this Okay, and now what we want to do is that we want to create animation. So click the recording button, select the color, and we're going to start off with transparency set to, to zero, the alpha set to zero. And then what we want to do is that we want to, we want to go, we want to move the white line to 0, 010 and at 0, 010 or at 0, 05 maybe. And at 0, 0, 0.05, let's make uh, the transparency, uh, the alpha 255. And at 0 0.10, let's let's make it again transparent. So what, one thing that we can do is that we can, is that we can select the first keyframe, hit Control C, and then hit Control V with the white line on the 0 0.10 or 0 0.1. All right. So if we hit play, you can see that there's a hit effect. We actually achieved the hit effect, and we have the animation done. So we can click the recording button again. And now if we go to the animator and we double click the hit effect, we can actually uncheck the loop time because we don't want this animation to be a loop. All right. So when we start the game, we're going to automatically, we're going to automatically activate the hit effect. And we don't want that. What we want to do is that we want to uh, do the same thing as we did before. We want to enter a new state and that new state is going to be an empty state. So nothing is going to happen. And when we set the trigger, then we want to actually go and play the hit animation. So let's do that. Let's create a state, an empty state. Let's right click on the entry and set set state machine default state. Select this and drag it to the new state. And from the new state, we'll make a transition to the hit animation. So 
right click the new state make transition to the heat animation now this uh the, this let's we will select the transition and in the transition we're going to create a parameter so make sure that you're in the parameters tab in here and click the plus button select trigger and we can call this hit and in here in the inspector on the right go where, to where it says conditions and click this plus icon and you will see that the hit trigger has been applied so when we when we call this hit trigger from the code we will go to the hit animation so now if we hit play we will see that uh, the game starts like this okay so what we want to do is that we are going to go to the animation and all right okay so i just want was making sure that everything was was right okay so so we hit play we will see that uh, okay so for some reason this is not working okay what we what we're going to do with the hit effect is that we're going to change the color so select the hit effect and let's change the default color to the, the when i say the color i mean the transparency let's set the default transparency to totally transparent and now we hit play we will see that the new state is activated and if we oh, let me see if we hit the if we select the trigger we will see the the hit effect take place all right so let's, let's try that again let's play the game and if we hit the trigger we can see the we can see the the, the hit effect all right so we have that so the only thing that we need to, know, to do now is to implement the trigger from the code okay so when are we going to implement that so let's go to the bird script and we're actually gonna call the hit effect whenever we collide with the pipes or with the ground so to do this we're going to create a reference to the hit to the hit effect so public animator hit effect so we're getting a reference to the animator component of the hit effect object and what we're going to do now is that we're going to call the trigger from the place that we want to set the animation so from here hit effect dot set trigger hit so if we hit the pipe we're going to activate the animation or if we hit the ground we are also going to activate the animation so hit effect dot set trigger hit and here in the trigger function in the on trigger function we want to make sure that we are we are only listening to the to the score or to the collision with the pipes if the game over is equal to false because if game over is equal to true we don't want to be listening to this so to fix this let's just say if game manager dot game over equals equals true okay so if game manager so it's the other way around if game manager class dot game over equals equals true then we're going to listen for colli for collisions okay and paste all right so so we have set everything so now we can we can comment out this line of code because we don't need it anymore and we can save the script go back to the unity editor hit play and you will you will see that it, it won't work and it's because we haven't set the reference here if you go to the console you can see the error, the error that we have it said the variable hit effect bird has not been assigned so if we go to our bird we can see that it's waiting for a reference to the hit effect so drag the hit effect object to the hit effect and we'll get its animator and now if we hit play we can we should actually be able to okay so so the reason why the, it, it is like this is because in the animation of the hit effect if we go to the animator window and we select the hit effect uh okay so if we select the transition we can see that it has an exit time so uncheck the exit time uncheck the fixed direction and set the duration to zero so now if we hit play everything should go very quick and fast right so now the hit effect responds the way it's supposed to but whenever it collides with the okay so it, this is it's not if it's true so in here in the 
C sharp script of the bird, I said if game manager dot game over equals true. So it's not true, it's false. So if game manager dot game over is equal to false, then we're going to do all of this. So let's go back to the Unity editor and check this out. Okay, so now we die. Perfect. So now the hit animation is working fine. Every time we collide. And every time we collide with the pipes, it's working too. All right. So this is going to be it for this video. I'll see you in the next video. All right. So now in this video, I'm going to try and create a camera animation. So when the bird hits the pipe or the ground, there's a camera shake. And it's going to be a nice touch to our game. So to do this, we're going to select our main camera. Select the animation window. Hit create. Go to our assets, animations. And in here, we're going to create a new folder called camera inside the, ca the camera folder let's create our new animation we're gonna we're gonna call it shake so that's gonna be the name of our animation so save and now we can hit the record the record button and now we can go to the transform position and we can change the position of the camera so the first position of the camera that we want is the zero on the x-axis then the next position of the camera that we want so on 0 0.05 we're going we're going to set the position to 0 0.03 then on 0 0.1 we're going to set the position back to 0 and on 0 0.15 so I'm, I'm i'm just moving the white line to where i want so on 0 0.15 we're going to set the position to so it was on zero so now it's going to be minus 0 0.03 and on 0 0.20 or 0 0.2 we're going to set the position to 0 all right so this is going to be the animation of the camera you can see that, that it's a little bit slow so we can just select all the keyframes by holding shift let me so let's let me hold shift and select every single keyframe and we can make it a little bit shorter so it's a little bit quicker okay so this is going to be the animation so let's let's click the recording button again to get out of the recording mode just let's go to the animation to the animator window and inside the animator window we're going to create a new state so right click and create state empty we're going to create we're going to create a transition from entry but this transition is going to be a set state machine default state to the new state and from the new state we're going to create a transition by right clicking and you select make transition to the shake animation Double click the shake animation and uncheck the loop time because we don't want it to be a loop. And click here on the transition and uncheck the has exit, the has exit time here in the inspector. The fixed duration, the transition duration set it to zero. And I think that's going to be it. One other thing that we need to do is that to set the trigger for the shake animation. So here where it says parameters, click the plus icon and select trigger. And in here we're going to put in shake for the trigger and select the transition again and here in the inspector in the conditions select click this plus icon and it will automatically uh, put the shake the shake trigger in there all right so we have everything set the only thing that we need to do is to call the animator of the camera from the script that we want to from the script where we want to activate this effect and in the script that we want to activate this effect is in the bird in the bird script we want to make a reference to the camera animator so let's say public animator camera anim like this and now we're gonna go to where we want to actually activate this effect so when we hit the pipe we want to say camera anim dot set trigger shake like this and if we hit the ground, we want to say the same thing. So camera anim dot set trigger open quotes shake. All right. So now you can see that here we have repeating code. We are repeating the hit effect trigger and the camera trigger, and we're repeating the hit effect trigger and the camera trigger. So to solve this, we can we could uh, make this uh, easier to read by creating a new method. So we will create a new method before the game over. And we will call this method we will call this method uh, bird die effect 
so let's create it void bird so bird die effect and inside this method we're going to just copy so we're gonna cut this from here i'm gonna paste it here and we're just gonna call the bird die effect in here like this and we're gonna do the same thing when we hit the pipes so bird die effect okay so now we only need to go to the unity inspector or to the unity editor and select our our bird and set our camera animator reference so select our main camera and drag it to the bird script save and now if we play the game you will see that if we actually collide the camera moves you can see that there's a shake of the camera which is i think it's pretty cool and that's gonna be it for this video i'll see you in the next video okay so now in this video what we're going to do is that we're going to create an animation for the game over object so what we're going to do first is that we're going to hide our get ready image so select it here in the hierarchy and hide it in inspector and we're going to select our game over object and just check it so we can see it here in the scene all right so we're going to animate this whole thing okay so select our game over object in the inspector select the container of everything and when we have it selected we can go to the animation window and hit create so we're going to select our assets animations and we're going to create a new folder and this new folder we're going to call it um, game over and inside this game over we're going to create our animation so let's uh, let's call it a game game over anim for example let's click save and now we can click the record button and now we can see that initially our game over animation is at position zero so what we want to do is that we want to move the whole thing up we can move it over here and then so it's now at position 1142 on the y and at a certain point so we're going to move the white line maybe at 0 0.2 we want to change the position of y to zero over here so we can see that it goes like this maybe it's coming too quick so let's just select the last keyframe and drag it to the right so we make it a little bit slower like this i think it looks fine maybe a little bit too too quickly let's okay i think that's good so now we can click the recording button again and now that we have this animation we can we can actually just uh, implement it so to implement this animation we can we can go to the animator window and we can see that whenever we enter the game so when we start the game we're going to uh, immediately call this animation but what happens is that this game object initially is set active to false so this is only going to execute this animation is only going to execute when this game object is is set active equals to true is set to active so that's the only moment that when this object is going to actually activate so so we don't have to actually specify any new state in here so what we're going to do is that we're going to go to the to our visual studio and in visual studio we're going to go to our game manager script and in here we want to actually uh we, we want to want to see when we are actually activating the game over canvas so when the game is over we're saying that game over canvas dot set active equals true so what we want to do here is that we want to uh, we want to wait a second and then we want to set the game over canvas equal to true so to do this we're going to create a new method here called void uh, and we're going to call this method activate game over canvas so if we activate the game over canvas what we're doing here is that we are actually uh, uh, setting the animation to true we are activating the animation so with the game over canvas what we're going to do is that we're going to cut this code and copy it over here and we're going to call this method inside the game over method but with one second of delay so in unity we have a special way to do this and it's with the invoke function so we type in invoke and inside the invoke function we 
we type in the name of the method that we want to invoke in, in inside quotation marks so we open quotes and then we say activate game over canvas and then we say comma and then we specify the amount of time that we want to wait so we want to wait one second so one second and then type in a semicolon all right so we already have that okay so now that we have that everything should work fine just make sure that uh just making sure that everything is right okay so now let's go to the unity editor let's hide the get ready the game over object sorry and let's uh, make the get ready image visible let's hit play and now if we die you might see that it takes one second but as you can see the animation is in loop mode so let's select our game over again let's go back to the animation to the animator let's double click the game over anim and let's uncheck the loop time so now we hit play everything should work, should work fine so the animation comes down and we can press ok okay so we have the animation coming down one thing we want to do is that we want to have the medal initially set to inactive so we, we want to deactivate the metal initially and we want to activate it when this animation finishes so to do this we're going to select the metal so and so just uh, click here in the panel so you can, we can see the metal and initially we're going to uncheck the metal so if we hit play and we play the game now we can see that when the when the game over uh, panel comes down there is no metal all right so now what we want to do is that we want to create an event in the game over object animation and here we want to create an event so when the animation ends create an event and in this event we're going to call a function but to do this we need to first create a script so let's go to the project to the animations no to the scripts folder and inside the animations folder let's create a new script we, we will call the script game over anim and and just uh, make sure you double click it game over anim inside this script we will delete everything and we'll just create a method called void on game over animation ends and when it ends we want to set the medal equal to active we want to activate the medal so we need a reference to the medal first so public uh, public game object metal like this and inside this this method we're going to we're going to say metal dot set active true like this all right so now if we go back to the unity editor we need to make sure that this game over animator is attached to our game over object so drag it and attach it to the game over object so now if we if we select the game over object we can see that the game over script is attached to it and we have the metal reference so we need to create a reference to the metal so let's drag the metal game object onto here and then click save and now we play the game we can see that when the game over panel comes down the metal should be activated but it says the animation okay so there's one thing missing and it's very easy to to forget things when you're doing animation because there are so many references there are so many things that you have to do in the animation that it's not complicated but it's a little bit uh, confusing and it's easy to forget things so in the animation window if we select the game over we forgot to actually specify the event so when the animation finishes we want to specify the event so on game over animation ends okay so this is the method that we want to actually apply so now you just hit Control s save the game and now whenever this the game over panel comes down when it finishes coming down then the metal appears okay so that's going to be it for this video i'll see you in the next video okay so in this video we're going to implement a behavior for the metal so when we play the game and we die we get the panel and we get a metal and what we do want to do with this metal is that we want to change um, the sprite of the metal depending on the score that we get all right so to do this we need to first implement a new script so we need to create a new script let's go to project and inside the project view let's right click and create a script let's call the script metal 
hit enter and open the script and now that we're inside the script we need to get uh, rid of the update because we're not gonna need it and before the start method we're going to set a reference to the different sprites that we need so public sprite so we need a sprite and the first sprite that we need is a normal metal so normal metal is gonna be the basic metal then we're gonna have a bronze metal so bronze metal we're also going to have a silver a silver metal and a gold metal so let's implement them silver metal and public sprite gold metal okay once we have the reference to every single sprite that we need that we're going to use now we have to create a reference an internal reference of the image component of the metal object so let's type in image and you can see that we don't have it here it does not auto complete and it is because we need the unity library so using we need the ui unity library so unity engine dot ui so image img so this is going to be the variable the reference to the image component and here in the start method we're going to assign this reference the image reference so image equals get component and we're going to say image okay so we have the reference and once we have the reference now we can change the sprite of this image according to the score that we get okay so here in the start method we're going to check what score we we got in the last game and we're going to change the the sprite of the metal accordingly but to do this we need to get a reference of that of that score so let's go to game manager and in game manager we're going to create a new public static in game score i already created it but i can do it again so public int public static int and i'm going to call, i'm going to call it game score and in this variable we're going to save the value of the last game okay the score value of the last game and this variable is going to be static because we want to call it from the class we don't want to make an object and then call this this variable we want to just call the class we want to be able to call the class and then call this game object all right so now what we have to do is that we need to get a reference so in the game over you have to realize that in here in game over, when the game is over we say that a score we, so we set the score active to false we deactivate the score so before we deactivate the score we need to get a reference of the score game object so the score game object has the score script and in the score in in that script we have the value of the score of the game all right so you can see here if we go to the score script that we have this score this is what we are interested in so we're going to create a new method in here that returns the score so to do that let's do it right now let's create a new method that returns the score so public public because we want the method to be public int get score and we're going to say return score like this so we're going to return the score and now we're going to go to our game manager and we have to call this method from here so if we go and say score dot get score it doesn't work like that right and why why doesn't it work like that because everything should be working we should be able to call the method get score with the score game object but the thing is that the score is a is of type game object so we actually need to get the component so this is a game object we need to first of all access the component of of the score object what i mean by this is that we need to access first of all the script of the score object and then we'll access the method so we have to say a score dot get component and we're going to say score because we want to get the score script component of the score game object and then we want to say dot and then what we want to say here is get score get score like this and now we have this is going to return the the score of the game but what we want to do is that we want to assign this value to a variable so we will assign we will assign this value to our game score uh, integer so game score equals score because we want we want our game score the game score that we created this game score we want it to be equal to 
the, la the score of the last game. All right, so now that we have that, now we can go back to our medal uh, class. And here we can check, we can say if, and in here what we can do is what we, we can create another variable called int game score. So I, I have called it game score, but this is another uh, this is another variable that has nothing to do with the with the variable inside the game manager class. But we're going to assign it the value. So we're going to say in game score equals game manager. So we call the class and then we call the variable. So we're gonna assign the value of the game score of the game manager. So then then after this we're going to check are we going to say if game score so if this if this local variable that has the value of the score okay so if game score is greater than zero and game score is less than or equal to two okay so if game score is one or two then we're going to assign uh, this, the normal sprite to our metal. So we're going to say uh, image dot sprite equals normal metal like this. All right. Now we're going to say else if I'm just gonna make make out make I'm just making up the the conditions because just to test them out. So if it's greater than two and game score is less than or equal to 4 then we want we can just copy this and paste it we want this metal to be the bronze metal we can just copy and paste so select command copy and command paste okay so now if game score is greater than 4 and game score is less than or equal to 6 then we want the sprite to be the silver medal and if it and if finally if game score is greater than six we want the sprite to be the gold medal all right so apparently we have everything set now we have to attach this script to our sprite so let's go back to the unity editor and let's look for our medal so our medal is inside the canvas inside the panel inside the game over container inside the panel here we can select our medal and we can add a component here and we can just search in for the for the medal and once we attach the script the medal script to our medal game object we can see that it is waiting for the normal medal the bronze medal the silver medal and the gold medal so let's go to our project to our sprites folder or one thing we can do is just instead of doing that we can go here to the field and we can press this circle over here and we can look for the different medals. So the normal medal is this one, the one that looks white. Then the bronze medal, we can look for the bronze medal. And the bronze medal is this one that looks a little bit orange. Then press the circle for the silver medal. The silver medal is this one. And then the gold medal is the most shiny one. Okay. So now we have everything set. So now if we press play, and we get a certain score so let's get one two three we die and you can see that we get the gold, the bronze medal in this case all right so everything's working fine that's gonna be it for this video i'll see you in the next video but with the wheel with the mouse button okay so in this video we're gonna add our final touch to our game our game is almost done it's looking very professional the only thing that we need to add is um, a way to draw the score on the board when the game over panel comes down so if we play the game we can see that if we get for example a score of one two and three we can see that when the game game over panel comes here the score is already being drawn to the to the board or to the panel but we want to actually draw it once it comes here so we want it to go from zero to the score that we got in the game okay so to this we need to add uh, an extra behavior so so to do this let's go to visual studio and let's see how this would work also okay so when the game over animation finishes so here we have we are in the game over anim script we are calling the medal so we're setting the medal to true we're activating our medal and we also want to draw the score okay so one way you can use comments is like this to to write the behavior that you want to happen in a single place so here we, we need to call a method that draws the score
okay so let's implement this method inside the game manager so let's go to our game manager script and in here we know that we have a reference to the score of the game but we're also going to create another int variable so int code draw score this is going to be the, the the score that we're going to draw to their panel to the panel okay so now what do we do okay so we can create a new method here let's create a new method called called public of type public void draw score and inside this method what we're going to do is that we're going to check if draw score if is greater or equal that game score and we're going to be writing the score to the panel so we also need a reference to the panel high score so let's let's type it in here so public text and you can see that we cannot uh, declare a, a type text and it is it is because we need to use the ui library so using unity engine dot ui and now we can declare a text so panel panel score because we want to this is what we want to reference our panel score this is where we want to what we want to change and modify and inside our draw score we want to check if we want to say if um, draw score is less than or equal to game score so if draw score is less than or equal to game score then we're going to say uh, panel score dot text is equal to draw score dot to string and then we're going to add one to draw score so draw score plus plus so draw score is going to be like a counter so in the beginning draw score is going to be equal to zero so we're going to draw zero and then it's going to be equal to one to two and to three and how do we do this well we should we, there, there should be a way to call this method again and again and again and again and we could do it with a loop one but another another way we can do it is by calling this method and below here we can just call the method itself again so to do this we, we just type invoke and we're gonna call the our own method so draw score and then we're going to do this after 0 0.05 seconds so we're going to be calling this method every 0 0.05 seconds um, we, 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 we will be drawing the score to the panel all right so apparently everything is done everything is set now the only thing we need to do is, is go to our uh, to our game over animation script and in here we need a reference to our game manager so we're going to say public game manager game manager we need a reference to our game manager and once we have that reference we're going to say in here game manager dot draw score so we want to draw the score when the animation of the game over panel ends so when the game over panel comes down to the middle of the screen we want to start drawing the score and one thing we also want to do is that we want to go to our score script and inside our score script we don't want to be uh, updating the the panel score text because we already have a reference outside so we already have this reference in the in our game manager script so now let's try to assign the references that we need we need to assign the reference of the of the public text panel score here and we need to assign the reference of in the game over animation to the game manager okay so let's try to do that let's go to the unity editor and inside here we're gonna look for our game manager game manager and we, we see that we need a reference to our panel score so uh, make sure you drag so click and drag panel score to this field all right and now we need to get to go to our um to our game to our game over game over object and in our game over anim script we need a reference to the game manager so drag the game manager onto this field all right so now we can save the game we can play let's get a score of three for example and see what happens perfect the score draws on the board so if we get a score of 20 it will draw from 0 to 20 perfect so that's gonna be it for the game for now and the only thing we need to do right now is to add the last touches to the game the last uh, modifications before we can publish it to the google play store i'll see you in the next video